Survival tip number four, keep and bear arms. First thing you need to keep in mind is I don't provide any training about how to use or maintain firearms. So you need to get your own training. Uh, that said, I'm going to give you my advice about what kind of gun you ought to have and why. It is crucial that you have some kind of weapon to defend yourself and to supply food. So I'm going to look at a couple of options that you have. Watch the extended edition for more details. Okay, for a shotgun, I recommend 12 gauge because it is ubiquitous. Everybody has 12 gauge. You should be able to find 12 gauge shot shells anywhere in the country even after an economic meltdown. There'll be plenty of people who have 12 gauge shot shells for trade and there are a lot of people out there already reloading. So it should be a fairly common round. There are as many calibers as there are hunters, it seems. And I like the Remington 7mm Magnum. That's my favorite hunting round. I like the ballistics of it. In a post Armageddon scenario, uh, it might be hard to find this round. So if you only have one rifle, this might not be the one you want. The Winchester 3030. This gun has been around for a long time. This is the Model 94. And it's uh, 3030 rounds are available all the time, everywhere. And there'll be plenty of people reloading these. It's light. It's, uh, you can mount a scope on it if you need to, but if you're a good enough shot with open sights, the thing about this gun is you can get it cheap and you can load it cheap and you can practice cheap and you can hunt cheap and it's entirely adequate to do almost anything, any kind of hunting that you need. So Winchester 3030 would be an excellent option. What kind of ammo do you want in a handgun? Um, you've got a lot of good choices. This is a Glock Model 26, which is in 9mm. It's relatively light and easy to carry, and it makes for a very good personal defense weapon. It's easy to conceal if you have a concealed carry permit, and it's light enough that you don't find yourself leaving it behind because it's inconvenient or too bulky. My favorite round in a handgun is 45 caliber. There's a number of reasons for this. One is, of course, that it's got more power than a 9mm, uh, the other thing is that it delivers more energy on impact uh, with a subsonic round, which means that if I put a suppressor on it, the suppressor actually does a really good job of suppressing the sound, not just of the blast, but since there's no supersonic crack of the bullet, then it really does quiet down the gun. Let's talk about how you should acquire your gun. If you buy a gun from a dealer, you're going to have to register your weapon with the federal government, and they're going to know that you own it, and if they ever want to come and confiscate your weapons, they can come and they'll find you. And they'll say, where's the gun? However, it is still legal in the United States, in most states as far as I know, uh, to buy a gun in a private transaction. And that does not have to be registered. In a survival situation, the gun that you're going to count on to have post-Armageddon or post-economic meltdown, you need to have at least one gun that is not registered. So you'll have to do it in a private transaction. Now go to survivaltipsonline.com and I'll give you all of the survival tips, the extended edition videos of the survival tips, the articles that go with the survival tips, and a whole lot more other information. And I give it all away for free because when you're prepared, it helps everybody, not just yourself. Survivaltipsonline.com.